Hello and welcome to a short video on the dangers of nighttime tornadoes. My name is Christine Wagas and I'm a meteorologist with the National Weather Service Forecast Office in Paducah, Kentucky. This graph shows the number of tornadoes in our area, namely southeast Missouri, southern Illinois, southwest Indiana, and western Kentucky by month from the years 1995 through 2017. 46% of all the tornadoes that have occurred in this region occurred in the months of April and May. Here is a graph showing you what time of day the tornadoes have occurred in our region from 1996 through 2017. It is pretty apparent that tornadoes can happen at any time of the day, but the majority of the tornadoes have occurred in the late afternoon through early evening hours. In fact, 70% of the tornadoes have occurred between the hours of 3 p.m. and 9 p.m. Therefore, the threat for a tornado to occur when it's dark outside is rather high. So let's take a look at our local tornado fatality statistics. Since 1996, there have been a total of 57 deaths from tornadoes in our region. However, 46 of these 57 deaths occurred with nighttime tornadoes, which is a staggering 81% of the total amount of deaths. In addition, 80% of the deaths have occurred in mobile homes. When investigating nighttime tornadoes, Research conducted by the National Weather Service Storm Prediction Center showed that a vast majority of these nighttime killer tornadoes were embedded in a long line of thunderstorms, or what we call a squall line. The radar image shows a line of storms which advanced across Missouri and into our region on the night of February 29, 2012. Eventually, 13 tornadoes were spawned during the overnight hours, one of which was a deadly EF4 tornado which impacted Harrisburg, Illinois. So, why are nighttime tornadoes more dangerous than those that occur during the daytime? There are a number of reasons, actually. At night, the tornado will be harder to recognize. Therefore, trained spotters will have a more difficult time locating and identifying them, especially at greater distances. Along the same vein, people who normally scope out the skies to confirm the fact that a tornado is actually occurring may not see the tornado before it's too late to take shelter. In addition, when tornadoes occur late at night or very early in the morning, that is a time when a vast majority of folks are sleeping. So, they are not going to have a television or radio on to hear about weather updates and warnings. In contrast, during the day when folks are up and about, they are on their phones, watching TV, or talking with coworkers, friends, and family. So, tornadoes occurring during the day will have a much better chance at grabbing people's attention. Sirens may not be of much help either when you're indoors, as they were designed to warn people outside. Lastly, some people are going to be in dwellings that are more susceptible to damage, such as single-family homes or mobile homes, instead of being at work or school in a stronger built building. One of the most important things you can do to reduce your chances of becoming a tornado statistic is simply being in the know. Weather is always changing and conditions can rapidly intensify during a severe weather event. It is very important to stay up to date with the latest information. If you know thunderstorms are in the forecast, find out how severe they might become and when they are expected. Before going to bed, check your favorite weather sources to find out more. Also, the majority of tornadoes that occur in the early spring can travel very quickly, sometimes up to 50 to 70 miles an hour, and they can develop rapidly. Therefore, the lead time, meaning the time between when the warning is issued and the tornado strikes, can be limited. It is important to know and practice your severe weather safety plan so that it can be executed in a timely fashion. The key is to know and practice your severe weather safety plan. A NOAA weather radio is going to be your number one alert tool since it is designed to do the work for you. Whenever the National Weather Service issues a warning, the radio will automatically turn on and alert you as long as you have the unit turned on and programmed correctly. This can be especially life-saving at night when most people are not actively monitoring the weather. Also, keep fresh batteries in your NOAA weather radio so it will still operate should the power go out. Alerts, such as tornado warnings, are sent automatically to WEA-capable cell phones during an emergency. For more information on how WEA works, please visit the website listed. If you plan on using your cell phone, always make sure the phone is charged up and is not on vibrate or in silent mode. 
it is always a good idea to have multiple ways to receive the warnings in case one fails. One of the keys to surviving a tornado is acting quickly when a warning is issued. The best shelter is going to be a basement or any underground shelter. Alternatively, an interior room on the lowest floor of a building, away from windows, is the next best choice. Crouch down as low as possible to the ground and cover yourself with pillows and blankets and wear a helmet if you have one. Stay away from outside walls. If you are in a mobile home or RV, leave if it is safe to do so. Just make sure you allow plenty of time to reach your destination. In other words, don't wait until the last minute to decide to flee. If you are driving at night and realize you are under a tornado warning, stop your vehicle and head to the first sturdy building you see. One sign you might have of a possible tornado is blue and green flashes of light due to the wind damaging power lines and transformers. You might even see debris blowing across the road. Next time there is a threat for severe weather during the nighttime hours, please take the time to educate yourself on what is forecast and for what time period. Check back often for updates to that forecast and monitor incoming weather by tuning in to your local TV station or with the National Weather Service. Be alert for any warnings and know what to do if one is issued. This vigilant approach to staying on top of the weather will certainly aid in keeping you safe. Thank you for watching and if you have any questions, please contact your local National Weather Service office.